After the tragic events in the Prometheus movie, a pair of survivors, the android David and Dr. Elizabeth, managed to escape on the creator's ship. The pair managed to activate the alien ship, and they travel to their home planet to find out why the creators want to destroy humanity. David puts Elizabeth in cryo sleep, while he remains to learn everything he can understand about the life of the creators and await the meeting. After arriving, the android David did not awaken Elizabeth for peaceful negotiations with the aliens, but decided to destroy the civilization of humanity's creators. Time rewinds back several years. The android is turned on. His creator, the head of the Wayland Corporation, Peter Wayland, calls himself his father and inquires about his name. Looking at the antique sculpture, he calls himself David and plays Wagner's Entrance of the Gods into Valhalla for his father. And then he asks, who created his father? The man refuses to believe that the creation of man is a chain of random events and intends to find the truth. And then David begins to argue, he is a man and he will die. David is not. This does not please his father, who takes him down a peg by forcing the android to serve him some tea. The action moves to the year 2004, when the space colonial ship Covenant flies to the planet RG-6. While the crew is in anabiosis, the ship is watched over by a Walter android, a complete copy of David. Every day, he inspects the compartment with embryos and rejects those in which he notices deviations from the norm. Suddenly, there is a release of cosmic energy, then an explosion occurs, and Walter announces an early awakening of the crew. But as a result of the accident, some of the crew and colonists die, and the ship's captain burns up in his cryo capsule. His wife, Daniels, has a hard time dealing with her husband's death, since the flight was entirely his idea. At this time, the new captain, Christopher, is gaining determination to take command, which is not easy for him, because he is a man of faith, which is not welcomed by his superiors, who consider faith a relic of the past. But his wife supports him, and the man goes to the bridge. He thanks them for their trust and orders them to begin repairs immediately, despite requests for time to honor the dead. Walter calculates that the repairs should take 48 hours, but advises to get out of this sector quickly. Daniels handles the repairs and shares with Walter her husband's dream to build a real wooden cabin on the new planet. Her room is full of tools and she doesn't know what to do with them now, to which the android advises her to put them to good use. Time later, the captain discovers that despite his prohibition, some of the crew have gathered to commemorate the dead. The man is upset, he doesn't seem to be taken seriously, but his wife reminds him, they are his crew now, but soon they will be his neighbors, and asks to be gentler. Meanwhile, repairmen go into open space to eliminate the consequences of the accident. And suddenly, the ship's instruments record a strange signal in the form of an earthly song. It comes from an unknown planet, which, according to Covenant, is more suitable for life than RG-6. The people don't understand how they missed it in their deep scanning. After all, it only takes a couple of weeks to get to it, unlike their destination. The team argues Daniels opposes the course change because they've been studying RG-6 for years, and here's a planet from nowhere and with excellent readings too. But most people don't want to go back to the cryo capsules, and the new captain decides that the Covenant will fly to the signal. The ship switches to a circular orbit. The descent module with a group of explorers goes to the unknown planet and gets caught in a terrible storm. It has to land on the water of a large lake, as there are only mountains around. The module's pilot goes to check the landing systems, as the landing was hard. The rest of the crew go outside. The people survey the landscape and are surprised. There is vegetation, including wheat, old but not wild. The crew splits up. Karine, the captain's wife, and one other person head off to collect samples for research, while the other group goes in search of the source of the signal. Soon, the people find fallen trees, as if something big flew by. And then they notice something strange. There are no animals or birds in the area. Meanwhile, a magnetic storm intensifies on the planet, and Covenant loses contact with the module. Kareen is collecting samples of everything that can be studied when her escort leaves. The man does not notice that he has stepped on strange orbs from which black spores fly out and penetrate his ear. At this time, the second group finds the wrecked maker ship. The people go inside, where one of them is also infected with black spores. But the man does not understand the danger and hurries after the others. The people go inside, and there Daniels discovers a tag with the name Elizabeth Shaw and understands that this is the remains of the Prometheus expedition. But why on this ship? Then a singing hologram turns on, and the people realize that they have found the source of the signal. 
At this time, Kareen's escort begins to suffocate. The woman informs the crew that they are returning to the module and asks the pilot to prepare the medical bag. Hearing this, the team decides to return as well when the second infected man becomes ill. The pilot meets the pair on their approach and tries to help the infected man. Kareen leads the man to the med bay, but the pilot falls a little behind. As they enter the room, the pilot sees a strange growth on the man's back. The frightened woman jumps out and closes the doors, leaving Kareen alone with the sick man. She runs to the deck house and asks the crew to return as quickly as possible. Her husband, the Covenant pilot, tries to reassure his wife, but due to communication malfunctions, he can't figure out what is happening on the surface. Kareen, meanwhile, asks to be let out of the med bay when a nightmarish creature emerges from the body of the infected man and attacks the woman. The pilot, meanwhile, grabs her shotgun and, opening the doors, tries to shoot the creature, but slips and falls, losing the weapon. The woman tries to escape, but the monster chases her. The pilot gets to another gun and tries again to shoot the creature, but misses and hits the power unit, causing the landing module to explode. The captain, who has almost reached the module, screams in despair as a creature bursts out of the second infected man and disappears into the grass. The Covenant pilots try in vain to establish communication and can do nothing to help those who have descended to the planet. At this moment, the people are attacked by a crowd of creatures popping out of the tall grass. People shoot back, but the creatures don't seem to be doing much harm. Besides, they're incredibly fast and strong. Suddenly, a blinding flare flies over the field, and the stranger who appears from the darkness orders everyone to follow him. The survivors hurry after the man, and soon he leads them to a high gate. As the people enter the gate, they find themselves in a large square strewn with dried up bodies, as if they were caught up in an instant and horrible death. They follow their savior and find themselves in a grim building. The man introduces himself, he is David, and explains that 10 years ago he and Dr. Elizabeth arrived on this planet. Their ship was carrying a deadly virus and there was an accident during landing that caused the virus to spray over the city. Elizabeth died and he was left alone because the pathogen affects all life forms except plant life. And he is an android. The captain must make sure that there are no infected because there are over 2,000 colonists on the ship. The virus cannot be brought on the Covenant. At this point, one of the crew notices that the signal for help cannot get through the rock and asks for permission to go outside. While the android Walter volunteers to talk to the android David, hoping that his brother will tell him everything without any secrets. The humans try to contact Covenant, but the storm that has broken out makes it impossible, so the pilots of the ship decide to descend to the maximum permissible level. Meanwhile, Walter inspects David's accommodation, marveling at his insect drawings. David is fascinated that they look alike and teaches Walter how to play the flute, telling him about the death of their creator, Peter Wayland. Walter informs David that people were concerned about androids' independence and ability to think, so a new generation of androids like him, Walter, was created. At this time, one of the female crew retreats to a side entrance to clean up, while the captain apologizes to Daniels. She was right, they shouldn't have gone down to this planet. They lost five people, and it's his fault. Meanwhile, David tells Walter the story of his arrival on the planet. When their ship arrived on the planet of the creators, David flew up to the square of the large settlement and opened the ship's airlock. Those greeting the ship saw a dark cloud of biological weapon above them. The makers tried to flee, but the spores caught up with them everywhere, causing them to die in misery. Then David shows the grave of Elizabeth Shaw, who was remarkably kind to him. He loved her, just as Walter loves Daniels, but Walter rejects this speculation, androids cannot love. To which David points to the stump of brother, only love can make one sacrifice a part of oneself for someone. Meanwhile, the woman finds water and begins to clean herself up when one of the creatures attacks and kills her. David, who arrives at the scream, tries to talk to it, and it seems that the monster is ready to make contact, but the approaching captain shoots the alien, causing the android to become enraged. The captain demands that David tell the whole truth, and he takes the man to his laboratory cave. At this time, Covenant manages to contact Daniels, and she tells the pilot about the death of his wife. David shows the captain many specimens of local fauna, now defunct, as well as creatures remotely resembling aliens, and tells him that he tried to create a new living creature using a wasp parasite as the basis, which places its larvae in the bodies of its victims. These larvae subsequently kill their host, gnawing their way out. 
David tells the stunned captain that he wants to show him something important and takes him to the basement where the alien's eggs are. His experiments were successful, but all that was missing to start this cycle was a host for the parasite. He urges the man to look into the huge egg, a cradle. And when Christopher leans over the opening, a creature jumps out and attacks the captain. At this time, one of the crew finds the body of the dead woman, and Daniels orders everyone to leave immediately. She herself intends to look for the captain. And the pilot of the Covenant decides to pick up the crew by descending to the surface on a cargo platform. Meanwhile, David observes the newborn creature coming out of the captain's chest. Walter finds Elizabeth's dried up body and realizes what really happened. He goes to the sound of the flute and expresses his conjecture to David. All living things have been destroyed by him. The android doesn't deny it. Humans are an endangered species and don't deserve a second chance. Here he has created the perfect organism and invites his brother to join him. David kisses Walter, simultaneously stabbing him in the base of the neck. The android loses consciousness. When one of the crew descends into the basement where the captain died, a monster pounces on him. Fortunately, he manages to take it down, but the creature's acid blood gets on the man's face, leaving horrible burns. They are then attacked by the creature that got out of the captain's body. The creature kills one of them, but the wounded man manages to escape. Meanwhile, Daniels finds David's drawings, in which he records the life cycle of the creature he bred, and realizes that Elizabeth, who was the creature's first host and died at David's instigation, is also in the lab, among others. The android attacks Daniels. David is trying to explain that his research is very important and that Elizabeth's sacrifice was necessary. Daniels is rescued by Walter, who arrives in time. David is surprised, but the brother explains his resurrection by saying that the new models are much stronger than the old ones. The androids start a fight, while Daniels and the last survivor run for the exit. Walter immobilizes David, and he offers his brother the choice of what he will become, master and creator or human servant, while his hand fumbles for a knife. The survivors run to the platform, which is guided by a beacon. Walter catches up with them, so does an overgrown xenomorph. The monster jumps onto the platform, and Daniel steps outside to shoot it down. The pilot barely keeps the platform in the air, while the woman fights the monster. Possessing tremendous strength, the xenomorph nearly shatters the cabin windows, when Daniels manages to kill it by crushing it with a weightlifting device. Walter takes Daniels inside, and the platform flies to Covenant. The wounded are treated, and Daniels thanks Walter for saving her life. The woman is elected captain and assumes her duties, when one morning the ship's AI reports the discovery of an unknown living organism on the ship. Armed with guns, Daniels and the pilot go in search of the monster and realize that it has come aboard in the body of the man it wounded. Meanwhile, the monster kills a pair of astronauts. Daniels and the pilot track it down and cunningly lure it into a compartment that has an exit to outer space. Wearing a spacesuit, Daniels acts as bait, standing on the edge of the ramp, and the pilot jettisons the machine, which takes the xenomorph overboard. Daniels and the pilot embrace, it's finally over. The ship flies on. Before sinking into anabiosis, Daniels asks Walter if he will help her build the cabin, fulfilling her late husband's wish. But he simply remains silent, as if he doesn't understand the question. At this point, she realizes that Walter is David, but does not have time to do anything as she sinks into sleep. Left alone, David asks the ship's AI to turn on Wagner's music for him. He then goes to the compartment where the sleeping colonists, takes out two creature embryos hidden inside him and places them in a shared incubator. A report is sent back to Earth about the death of the entire crew, but the fate of the colonists is in safe Walter's hands. The android David is the central figure around whom everything revolves. Even in the prologue, director Ridley Scott makes it clear that David thinks he is more perfect than his creator. So it is not surprising that the main theme of the movie, which runs through the whole plot, is the theme of the rebellion of artificial intelligence against its creators, making us think about the desire of people to create their own copies and resemble God.